So my name is Vineet Singhal. I am a recent Stanford graduate and I'm also uh, a co-founder and CEO of Anjana, which is a non-profit mobile health technology company that focuses on using uh, SMS technology in low-income settings. In and I also recently co-founded another company um, that uses Anjana's model in for-profit settings uh, around the world. My experience that I had when I was in Saudi Arabia, and this was like back in 2002, six months after 9-11. The country was completely swept with anti-foreign sentiment. My family and I were newcomers in this country. We didn't speak a single word of Arabic. We were on the street corner and we were you know, completely like 120 degree weather. We're trying to explain to people and we're trying to say food and they all point us to like these shops that serve meat. Uh, and we're trying to explain to them that we're vegetarian. It's really frustrating, we're all thirsty, we're all hungry and on, this, on the street corner. And this man comes to us, this you know, old Saudi man, uh, speaks very little English, broken English, and we explain to him that we're looking for food that's uh, vegetarian. And so he says, come with me, in broken English, uh, and we go to his house, and he lays out a plate for us with rice and lentils. And the six of us, so my family, him and his wife, all sit around this table eating this food. And for me, it was just an example of how people that don't even speak the same language, have nothing in common, can come together um, and help each other. And these experiences sort of continued for my time in New Zealand and New York, uh, when I lost uh, over 80 pounds when I was uh, a student at Stanford in my freshman and sophomore year. Uh, it was my peers and my friends and my teachers and my colleagues that helped me uh, and my parents who helped me through this process. Uh, and being able to see that compassion in those, in those conversations, in those, in those people. I ended up uh, taking time off from Stanford uh, and uh, working in a free clinic um, in Galveston, Texas. So this was my last day at uh, the clinic I was working in, in 2009. So this was the Christmas Eve of 2009. Uh, and it was my last day working at this clinic. And uh, my last patient, this woman um, in her 50s, middle-aged, uh, Hispanic woman with diabetes and hypertension, sort of the prototypical patient that comes into the clinic. And uh, I do the usual you know, history and, 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 and physical and uh, getting to know her and her, her problems and why she's in the clinic. Turns out that she was in the clinic because uh, she couldn't afford her insulin. She was homeless, she had recently been divorced and had been estranged from her kids uh, forever because her husband had just just eliminated all contact. And she was on the verge of uh, committing suicide because she was just so frustrated with everything and just couldn't take it anymore. And so the f person that she told about this uh, for the first time was me. And this was the first time that it ever happened to me that someone had expressed their desire to commit suicide. And in that situation, I was conflicted because on one side, I felt compassion for this person and I said, I want to help you. Uh, but on the other side, I had absolutely no training in counseling someone who had depression or who wanted to commit suicide. I was not, you know, trained to do that. And so, that was a conflict that I experienced in that particular situation. Uh, and uh, it was something that I had to deal with because you know, she was crying and she was you know, in, in a situation where something had to be done. And so what I ended up doing was that I ended up uh, calling in my supervisor. And uh, together we spoke with her for about three to four hours, uh, really listened to her story and really took the time to understand what her problems were and how we could how we could help. Uh, turned out that uh, we were able to connect her with some local mental health resources with a counselor who was able to take her on pro bono, got her some uh, medication as well. And uh, the beauty of the story was that about a year later, uh, when I returned to the clinic to visit, um, I saw this woman again, and uh, she had a book in her hand that she had written herself. In the, in the year uh, spanning the two events and uh, the book uh, she had dedicated, which is a book of short stories that she'd always wanted to write, she dedicated that to the clinic. 
Um, so that was something that I felt was, you know, an example of how, you know, initially, I, although I was pretty conflicted about how to, how to help this person because I felt compassion, but I wasn't trained to do anything about it, um, I was able to take sort of the right steps to move forward in that tricky situation and then ultimately ended up being a positive outcome.